My brothers and sisters, no matter what it is that you go through, understand that God is able to deliver you, and he'll never put more on you than you can bear. So come on and help me sing this song, Wondering. Hello and welcome to the Know Your Bible YouTube broadcast. I'm your host, Bishop Fred A. Carwell Sr., pastor teacher of the Greenwood Acres Full Gospel Baptist Church, domiciled right here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Due to the stay-in-place order, I'm coming to you by means of video, and I trust that I will be received by you wherever you are, and I know that I will. You can look forward to the Word of God coming to you each week. You will see information on the screen telling you how you can mail in your tithes and offerings to Greenwood Acres Full Gospel Baptist Church, 7480 Greenwood Road, Shreveport, Louisiana, zip 71119, or you can send your tithes and offerings using the cash app. So look for that information on the screen below. Now let's get into God's precious word. I'm excited. I trust you are too. It's time for the word. <laughs> Well, greetings, beloved. I'm Bishop Fred A. Caldwell Sr., the pastor teacher of Greenwood Acres Full Gospel Baptist Church, domiciled right here in Shreveport, Louisiana, and the host of the Know Your Bible. It's such a joy to be with you today, and I trust that God's Word will find you and yours that you love in the Master's loving care. I realize that we are in the midst of COVID-19 and Corona but we're also in the midst of a blessing. The Lord is the one who is keeping us alive. And I thank God for that today. And I trust that you and your family is staying safe and out of harm's way. There's a word from the Lord is found in the gospel according to Luke chapter 10 and commencing at the 17th verse. The Bible says in the 70th returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That's what I want to talk to you about today. The book of life. Your names are written in heaven. Jesus sent out 70 and he sent them out two by two. And they went out in basically every place. And they returned back unto the Lord Jesus Christ with joy. And they said unto him, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through your name. We found out that there is power, power, wonder, working power in your name, Lord. That's what we found out, that the demons are subject unto us through your name. Now listen up. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. In other words, when Satan was kicked out of heaven and he brought a third of those angels with him and he landed here on terra firma, mother's earth, he brought with him a kingdom of darkness. And so therefore Jesus said, I was there when he was kicked out of heaven. He says now, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the ability of the adversary, of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood and name of our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And he wanted his disciples to know that you have no fear from the forces of darkness. You have no fear or you need to have no fear when it comes to COVID-19, 20, 21 or 22. We do need to walk in wisdom, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love 
and of a sound mind. And he goes on to say in verse 20 of Luke chapter 10, he says, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. He said, don't get all excited because the spirits are subject unto you through my name. You can get excited, but I got something even more exciting. Listen up. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now here, the Lord Jesus Christ makes it known that the disciples rejoicing ought to be because their names are written in heaven. That's where the book of life is. And that's what I want to talk about today, the book of life. Now, as the Lord Jesus Christ was standing here facing the 70, he told them to rejoice, not that spirits are subject unto you through my name, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And I cogitated on that. If those disciples' names were written in heaven, and they were, then some of those disciples, every one of those disciples, had names that were given to them by somebody that named them. Like, for instance, the sons of Zebedee, James and John. You know what they were called? The sons of thunder. <laughs> Saul of Tarsus, whose mama named, nope, somebody named him Saul. His name was changed in the earth realm, and we know him as the Apostle Paul. Then, you know, so, so what I'm saying is that God will respect what our parents have done. However, there's a new name written down in glory, and his man, Lord, it's all mine. So whatever names we have right now, the Lord can respect those names. James, Bartholomew, Thomas, Peter again, James the less, and it goes on and on. However, rejoice rather because your names are written in heaven. Now, when we think about our names being written in heaven, we have to realize that there is also uh, in heaven a book. And that book is called the Book of Life. Now, before we get deeper into that, just follow along with me. Because they were to rejoice rather because their names were written in heaven. Well, if their names were written in heaven and they were here on earth and they had to die because none of those 70 that the Lord spoke to are alive today. Jesus is the only one that was in that conversation who is yet alive today. <laughs> oh, you know it if you're born again, he lives inside of you. So Jesus is alive today. All those folk are dead and gone, but he told them, that your names are written in heaven. Now, I submit to you that God makes choice and made choice of the believer before the believer ever got here. And God is not willing that any should perish. So there's no such thing as predestination, how God uh, predetermined so many to go to heaven and so many to go to hell. That's a man-made doctrine. That's not in the Bible. Predestination is to mark out beforehand whatever your final destination will be. That's what predestination is. They do it every day at Shreveport Regional. If you have to travel from Shreveport to Dallas and you're going to do it uh, on Delta or American Airlines, then you have to call and get that time and that seat and that airline and that ticket money paid before you leave Shreveport Regional. And when you get to Dallas, you're gonna come in at a certain gate. 
So predestination means to mark out beforehand where you are going from here. So when we talk about God and predestination, we're talking about God predetermined that every man who turns to Jesus Christ will be baptized by the Holy Ghost into the body of Christ and sealed until the day of redemption. That's what predestination is. That's also what election is. That's also what redemption is and justification. All of that. So when Jesus told those disciples that, listen, rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven, he was telling them that there is a book of life out there in the future, your name is already written down in it. In the epistle of Paul's writing to the church, to the churches of Galatia, because those were uh, pluralistic churches. This is the only epistle that Paul wrote uh, that had various churches connected to it. So it's the churches of Galatia. Okay, but in this epistle, chapter one, and listen to verses 15 and 16 of Galatians chapter one. Paul writes, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Paul says, I didn't go to some man to find out whether or not God had called me. He said, God revealed it to me that he had called me by his grace and that my task was to preach Christ among the Gentiles. He said, immediately, I did not confer with flesh and blood. You know, along the way, I've had people come to me and say, Pastor, I believe that God is calling me to preach. I say, is that right? Say, yeah. Say, but I'm not sure. I say, well, he didn't call you. If you are not sure, he didn't call you. It may be trapped somewhere in your thinking, but everyone whom the Lord calls, they know it. Okay, but that's another subject. But here we have in Galatians 1 and 15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. See, the beautiful part about God right here is that God revealed to Paul that he had called him by his grace, even though Paul ended up preaching the law because he learned it at the feet of Gomel. And he found out that the law had no saving efficacy. It had no saving grace to it. So God had separated Paul from his mother's womb and called him by the grace of God. So God knew Saul of Tarsus before he was ever placed in Saul's daddy's loins or Saul's mother's womb. God separated him and called him for a purpose, and that purpose was to be the apostle to the Gentiles. So if Paul says to the Gentiles, of which I am, and probably you are too, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. That's the sure way of being saved. He gave that to the apostle, to the Gentiles. For by grace are you saved, not works by grace are you saved? Okay? So therefore, I submit to you that Saul was chosen by God out of eternity and then sent into time. Same thing happened in my life. Same thing happened to you. If you are a believer, then that means then that God chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world was laid. God had already made choice of you. Now, Everyone that is born into this world, this is the premise. Names are written in the book of life. Did you hear me? Adolf Hitler's name was there. Jeffrey Dahmer's name was there. Okay? Bundy's name was there. The Atlanta children murderer 
name was there. You say, wait a minute, pastor. Wait a minute, hold everything. No, you hold everything. I submit that everyone that is born into this world, name is written in the book of life. So you say, well, what happened? God presented his son Jesus either through your grandmother, your pastor, your neighbor, your coworker, or you caught it on the web, or you caught it on television, God extending his mercy and his grace to you and calling you to come to Christ. But now you let somebody tell you that Jesus is a white man, and if you black like me, you got problems with white folk. So why in the world would a black man want a white savior? I submit to you that Jesus is not white. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And no white man came out of Judah. The white man came out of Japheth. It's not a slap, it's just the truth. The black man came out of Ham. So what we have here is the gospel of Jesus Christ going to all the world and preach this gospel to whom? To every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So everyone who turns their back on the Lord Jesus Christ and refuses to accept him in this world as Lord and Christ, and they exhale their last breath, and the corner comes and commits the body. The body is separated from the spirit and the soul. And the spirit and the soul ends up either in hell, uh-huh, because you remember now, the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 16 talked about a rich man and a poor man. The rich man died. And the Bible says, and Jesus said, in hell, he lifted up his eyes. But wait a minute. Hell is not the final destination for those that are lost. Hell is a holding place until the great white throne judgment. And then hell will have to give up the dead that are in it. Death and hell will have to deliver up the dead to the great white throne judgment. And that's where the books will be open. So if you want your name to stay in the Lamb's book of life or in the book of life, you'll call on Jesus today. Because if death catches up with you before you catch up with Jesus, you are lost forever. But you know the amazing thing about it is that once you die in this world, it's not over. It's just getting started which means then that God got your name right there. It's right there. It's in, the, it's in the book of life now. If you've never accepted Jesus and you're listening to me, your name is in the book of life. I know it's hard to phantom, but that's the grace of God. That's the mercy of God. God says with loving kindness, hallelujah, have I drawn you. What's loving kindness? It's the cross at Calvary on which Christ was crucified. He died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But the third day, God raised up Jesus from the dead, according to the scripture, with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus went into hell and got the keys, the keys of hell and death. And then the third day triumphantly rose from the dead with all power. So how say some among you that there is no hell? Well, if there's no hell, where in the hell did Jesus get the keys from? He got them out of hell. So don't believe it. And everyone who leaves here without Jesus, names are blotted out of the book of life. That is frightening. That's frightening. Why you have this chance, the Lord say, the day you hear my voice, harder not your hearts. Don't harden your heart. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at the preacher that did your family wrong back in 1941. It's time to be saved. It's time to call on Jesus. For thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. 
You remember the Philippian jail out there when the Lord shook the foundation and that keeper of the prison cried out, what must I do to be saved? Paul answered back, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and your house. So not only does God want you saved, sir, ma'am, he wants your children saved, your grandparents saved, your nieces and your nephews because their names are right there. They are right there in the book of life. You don't have to believe me, but if you want to be right, you will. All right, let's press on. In the book of Revelation, and we need to go and take a look at chapter three. Revelation chapter three, you'll find these words. Revelation chapter three and verse five. Jesus is speaking. He says, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Now that white raiment right there speaks of the righteousness of the saints. God clothed those that are redeemed at the end of the day in white linen. And it speaks of the righteousness that's been gifted to them by the Lord. Amen. But listen to this, uh, Revelation 3 and 5. He that overcometh, mark that now, because we're going to have to go back to that, because that's talking to those that overcome, all right? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not, not blot his name out of the book of life, there it is, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now, wait just a moment. This deserves just a little bit of discussion here. <laughs> if the individual refuses to accept Jesus and dies without him. Now, remember, a person that's born in, I know it can get complicated. I, you know, just listen. I, I hope that it doesn't. But everyone that is born into this world is born in sin and shaping in iniquity but God writes their name in the book of life because his plan is to get the gospel preached to them while they are here because they are already dead while they are here. That's why they must be born again while they are here because when this life is over, you cannot be born again. You can call on Jesus and call on Jesus until you fall out. But to be absent from the body as a believer is to be present with the Lord. That means your name remains in the book of life because you are an overcomer. If you refuse to accept Jesus, you're already dead. You are experiencing now, as I speak, your first death. We were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Mama was a sinner. Daddy was a sinner. Granddaddy auntie, all were sinners. Only God can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing. So you need to hear the Lord today. This is not about going to church because Satan does that. This is about coming to the Lord. This is about not confessing your sins to the Lord as a sinner. This is about confessing Christ as your savior, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Here Jesus is saying that if uh, you are an overcomer, then he's saying that your, your name will not be blotted out of the book of life. It won't be blotted out, but your name will be confessed before his father and before the angels. Now, come on now. If you're a ranked sinner, I know you probably never heard this before. Your name is written in the book of life. And it's up to you to claim Jesus before you draw your last breath. The rich man did not go to hell because he had money. And the poor man in Luke chapter 16 did not go uh, 
to paradise, which at that time was below the earth, did not go to paradise because he was poor. The poor man went to paradise or into the bosom of Abraham because he was living his life God's way. The rich man died and in hell, he lifted up his eyes because he was living his life his way. You can't have it both ways. So who then are these overcomers? Because Jesus said to the overcomers, I will not blot their names out. So listen up, believers, in 1 John chapter 5 and commencing at verses 4 through 6, you'll find these words. For whatever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. So when you came to Jesus and you called on him, God gave you eternal life. In the same first John chapter five, to assure you that you could not be saved and lost, listen to this. In uh, 1 John chapter 5 and commencing at verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. That's the Holy Ghost. He that believeth not God had made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. Come on, Tyler Perry. This is where you have your haves and your have nots. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. That's why everyone that is born into this world is born in sin, but God's mercy and grace is extended through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that that person can accept Jesus and their name can remain in the book of life. Man, ain't that plain and sweet? <laughs> I came to Jesus on a Wednesday night uh, about 47 years ago when I'd gone home to commit suicide. Billy Graham was on the TV. The gun was on the coffee table. Mary and the kids were in the back room sleep. And that's when I saw these people responding to the cross. It was at the cross, at the cross. The hymnologist says, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life, not death, not destruction, life. Don't you hear him calling you out of darkness? Come on. Don't you hear him calling you away from Satan's grasp? Come on. They overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. What was the word of their testimony? I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. That's all you need to say. Jesus come into my heart and he will make you a brand new creature. Now, the argument goes on. Well, Bishop, you couldn't be right saying that even the murderer's name is written in the book of life. I'm telling you, everybody's name is there. And if death catches up with them before they accept Jesus, their names are blotted out. Why? Why? <laughs> How did how did your name last that long without being blotted out? Because you were still alive and breathing. So what occasion did to be blotted out? When you left this world without Jesus. Anyone who leaves this world without Jesus goes straight to hell immediately. And they are tormented in the flames until they are brought out of hell at the great white throne to stand before God and the books are open and another book is open 
And God is making sure that all of his created intelligences, all of his angelic hosts, and yeah, even the saints will realize that he's a just God and that he's not doing anybody any wrong. So he will justify it because he will show that awful blank in the book of life where your name used to be while you were here, too busy partying, didn't have time for the Lord. Wouldn't it be terrible and ain't it gonna be sad when you standing out there wishing for mercy at the great white throne judgment and if the Lord says to you, go into the lake of fire. While you were on earth, you had no time for me. And now that you are here at the great white throne judgment, I have no time for you. Man, ain't that going to be awful? And there's no recourse. Listen up. In Revelation chapter 20 and commencing at verse 11, the Bible says, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. What does that mean? That means if you leave this world depending on your works to be saved, you are doomed at the great white throne judgment. And make no mistake, everybody that missed God, rejected Jesus, will be at the great white throne. Not to be saved, but to show why you are not saved. Because your name won't be there. So that tells me then that your name is there. It'll be brought it out if you don't accept Jesus and it won't appear at the great white throne judgment. So today is the day of salvation. And right now is God acceptable time to be saved. So let me read on. In the 13th verse of Revelation chapter 20, the Bible says, and the sea gave up the dead that were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. And they would judge every man according to their works. Your works and my works will never mount up. That's why the work that Jesus did at Calvary was accepted by God. And that's why God raised him from the dead the third day. You can't top that. Receive what has already been done for you. Something that you and I would never ever be able to do. Okay. Don't get caught up in the hype of the black Hebrew Israelites. Don't get caught up in the hype of the Muslim stuff. Don't get caught up. Come to Jesus right now and call on him for salvation. There is a fountain and it's filled with blood and it's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilt and stain. And finally, in Revelation chapter 20, as I read on verses 14 and 15, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. So we see then that hell is not the eternal end for those that reject Jesus. It's the lake of fire. Amen. They were brought out of hell to stand before the great white throne judgment. And then what happened after that is death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Why? Because the first death is here. We were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. That's the first death. The second death is in the lake of fire and there is no recourse. Now notice this. And whosoever was not found written, here we go, in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Uh-huh. God blotted that name out because death had caught up with them before they caught up with Jesus and they were lost eternally, period. Amen. Praise God. Well, the electricity just went out, but nevertheless, God's light in his word is still shining. I trust to see you next time 
on Know Your Bible YouTube. You be blessed today and have a God bless good day. Bye now. Speaks to me.